Hoje em dia são umas reações dessas. Why Chick Fil A? Or Chick Fil A outperforms the competition. Capitalism done right. What? So this is gonna be an awesome video because this is the video of Fred Johnson thinks is capitalism done right. I'm sure he'll have great argument about it because we know how <laughs> how how he rants about communism. So I'm guessing seeing the same math, he must have great argument for like capitalism done right. It's gonna be great. Uh, I've seen videos of him talking about chains, right? Which already, like I said, has been great, right? He, he when he argues about things, he really makes you feel like, yeah, that makes sense. He's it, that's really you know like awesome, right? What's that video for ah uh, that store thing? Uh, right, that that German store which has two store in the USA, two two brothers company but named differently, Trader Joe's and the other one, right? Uh, so yeah, they, they, how great they are, they are German, they just like generic thing, but it's just like this is the thing you get, there's so much option, but you don't want option, it's just like performs great, and there's that Costco thing, which is insane, when I think about it, how is that not a thing in India, right, where that would work, they just sell you shit on like, uh, you know, base price, and they make, uh, you know, like how they can give you this pass and things, oh that's so good, right, shit like this would really work, and it's not like a lot of American things are in India already, right, from Starbucks, uh, McDonald's, uh, Burger King, KFC, a lot of things are already kind of working here, so there are things like that would really work, so Chick-fil-A is something like that, I'm pretty sure McDonald's is the biggest uh, by profit margin and like overall numbers, I think McDonald's is the biggest one, right, in fast foods, Subway McDonald's usually like fight or is that an old news? Something like this is like outperforming them. It's gonna be interesting. Let's do this one. Remember people, if you like my reaction, don't forget to subscribe. That way you can really help out this channel by helping the algorithm and things. I like watching videos about like, uh, you know, factories and channels like that because it really gives me perspective how really things work there. You kind of have a general idea of things because America's like, that's what the media is. People know about more America than they know about their own country. But things like this really clears things up, right? Uh, so like how things are working and usually it trickles down like capitalism and like that's how the business is done around the world, I guess. And it starts from America and trickles down to everywhere. So really interesting to see how it's working there because usually it trickles down to every other country around the world. So let's watch one. My favorite business model of all time and I think that it is the epitome of capitalism done right. <laughs> Today we're talking about Chick-fil-A. It is the most successful restaurant chain in America and it has done that despite being canceled like every five minutes for the past decade. So at a bare minimum, regardless about how you feel about Chick-fil-A, you should at least take the time to understand their business model because it's really, really good. And when I say it's good- Wait a minute, you mean cancel like they actually cancel themselves or cancel like that media cancel, that thing? Oh, that's cancel lives, whatever the thing that is, right? Hashtag woke and whatever, is, is that what he means? But that's an understatement because they're not just the most successful restaurant chain in America. They are the most successful by like 10 miles. They absolutely body the competition. What the f- It's bigger than McDonald's? Oh man, I did not see this shit coming. Subway is like all the way down there. No one cares, right? <laughs> Cheek full look at that. F Five million. McDonald's is like three. Chipotle two. There's Wendy's. Do we have Wendy's in India? I don't know. Taco Bell, yeah, we have Taco Bell here. Burger King, Domino's, yeah, that too. Starbucks. Then some Dunkin' Donuts somewhere. Damn, that's something. It's not even close. Okay, let me break this down for you. The most profitable restaurant chains of 2023 are as follows. Starbucks with $35 billion, McDonald's with $25 billion, and then coming in third is Chick-fil-A with $21 billion. So how is it that the third most profitable restaurant is somehow the most successful? Well, per capita matters, right? Because Starbucks is coming in first with $35 billion, but they've got 38,000 locations. McDonald's coming in first with 35 billion dollars but they've got 30 oh that's how makes sense right so yeah i mean yeah the starbucks like bank we just saw a video of fat files of fatters and made right which is makes sense how it, it is the dominant this way can you really compare coffee with fast food but okay uh mcdonald's and mcdonald's it makes sense like there's mcdonald's everywhere but yeah chick-fil-a more profit but less stores kind of makes sense Look at this, like, yeah, even, yeah, it's, 
it's saturated. Okay, the snowboard color wise. I'm like, I thought it's gonna be saturated, like where people use most. And I'm like, okay, why is that so? I didn't, I don't think that's that famous in India. I mean, sure, people drink Starbucks, but not that famous. But yeah, it's everywhere. 8,000 locations. McDonald's coming in second with $25 billion, but they've got 40,000 locations. Chick fil A is coming in third. Oh, that's saturated best. $25 billion, but they've got 40. Yeah, sorry, it was mute. US is so red, it's just like, yeah, 14,000 plus locus and mix. And there's China there, and yeah, everywhere else. Yeah, India is like 250 plus McDonald's, it also makes sense because that's where most of India is not cities. Uh, you know, like, yeah, rural areas, things not gonna really have McDonald's like that, but there's a lot of cities as well, so it kind of makes sense. But yeah, Brazil and everywhere. 30,000 locations. Chick-fil-A is coming in third place with $21 billion and they have 2,900 locations. Okay, these other restaurant chains are 12 times larger and have roughly the same output as Chick-fil-A, meaning that the average Chick-fil-A is like 12 to 14 times more profitable than your average McDonald's or Starbucks, which is absolutely fucking insane. And then it gets even crazier when I remind you that Chick-fil-A isn't open on Sundays, meaning that Chick-fil-A is outperforming all of its peers with less locations, working less hours a day, working less days per week. And we're going to get into how that's possible right after a word from our sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Rocket Money. It is your all-in-one finance app capable of doing pretty much anything you could want. It does all the normal stuff that you would expect, like help you set a budget, monitor your credit, even track your net worth. But what sets Rocket Money apart is they help you identify every single subscription that you are paying for monthly. And half the time, you forgot you were even paying for that. Okay, me and my wife do this all the time. There's always some football game or MMA fight that I want to watch and some TV show that she wants to watch and for some reason it's on some streaming service or app that nobody has ever heard of so we have to go get the app get the streaming service sign up for the seven day free trial just to watch our show then we forget we signed up for the free trial and then we're getting charged seven eight nine ten dollars a month every month for the next three years and i have no idea how rich are you okay i have this problem as well but i'm guessing this is big problem in america that they can actually create a whole company and app for that like how rich are you there that you actually pay for subscriptions Forget about it. They keep charging you and you don't even care about or notice that. That is insane. First of all problems, right? <laughs> you know, I have problems because, you know, I've always been digital guy, right? So I always have this kind of streaming services. Sometimes I feel, what the fuck? I'm paying for that and then, then I cancel it. I actually cancel it because, uh, you know, I don't just like, ah, oh, fuck it. I'll, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not doing that. But this is an actual problem that they have to create a whole company for it that it can actually help you because you have too many subscriptions, people that's taking money out of you. You don't even have that app because you removed it from your phone or something. Okay, because online streaming has just turned into cable again, let's face it. Is Rocket Money gonna fix that problem? No, not really, but they are gonna help you quit paying for it. In addition to that, recurring monthly payments that aren't necessarily subscriptions, so like your cell phone or your internet provider, Rocket Money will actually help you negotiate to lower your bill and save you money there too. So if you wanna give Rocket Money a try for free, you can go to rocketmoney.com slash fat files. I'm gonna have it also linked in the description down below. Let's get back. You can negotiate with Netflix. What are you gonna say? Like, give me less money. Netflix is gonna say either buy it or go away. Like, I, I didn't know you can negotiate i'm guessing he means like what is the best plan for you we'll check it or something back to the video anyways let's take it from the top all right our story begins march 21st 1921 when this old guy was born well he was a, he was a baby at the time he was just born it was his first birthday well his zero birthday which doesn't make sense because technically that literally is his first birthday but we don't call it your first birthday until you've already been alive for a whole year which what the fuck man <laughs> that is so why do i just realize this oh my god I know a lot of like physics and science shit, but this surprises me. Yeah, that is, this is your first birthday. Not really, it's just one year is over. It's not your first birthday, it's like, <laughs> what the fuck? The first birthday would be the day you're born, right? I guess the f event we call a birthday, this is first of all, but that signifies the one year is over type of way. Sure. Anyway, birthdays are dumb, moving on. Sorry, anyways, that's true at Kathy. He is a founder of Chick-fil-A, and when he was 20 years old, Pearl Harbor was attacked, at which point I assume he thought to himself, you know what this world needs? 
less fascism and more dope ass chicken sandwiches. So he joined the army. So he goes, he fights in World War II. Fast forward, 1945, allies win. He comes back home, crosses defeat fascism off the to-do list. Only thing left, make a dope ass chicken sandwich. First things first, gotta have a restaurant, right? So he opens up his own restaurant. It is called Dwarf House and it is open 24 hours a day, six days a week, every day, except for Sunday. He's a real religious guy. He just believed in taking Sundays off. So that's what he's up to for like the next 21 years from 1946 till 1967. He's running this. Yeah, he's a religious guy and also the guy who's like, I don't want, I don't want to have a phone call, some manager calling me because there's an issue in the place. So yeah, I want Sunday off type of way. I can see that. There are certain like uh, shops here, singular shops, but like I said in one of the videos, like some shops makes a killing here. Fast food type of shops, right? Local shops. So this shop is so famous with the sandwich. And it makes such a good, like I, even I've eaten, like it's really great. He really keeps it off. He doesn't have reason to keep it off on Sundays because there's no religious thing like that here. Like you have to keep it off Sunday, but he just does that, right? Why? Because he makes so much money Monday to Saturday. He doesn't care about Sunday. He wants a Sunday off. Singular restaurant that is his, getting a bunch of experience, learning, you know, doing the whole shtick. His current restaurant has this enormous menu. Then one day in 1967, he's working with this food distributor that offers him a deal on chicken breasts because they are selling chicken breasts to the airline and the airline can only take these little tiny chicken breasts that fit inside the little itty bitty airline food trays. So all the chicken breasts that he's going to be getting are just the big juicy ones. And he's like, yeah, I can figure something out. From there, he goes into his lab trying to figure out the the best way to cook chicken breasts and he decides he's going to pressure cook it inside fancy peanut oil with his secret blend of herbs and spices and that recipe is still locked up in chick-fil-a headquarters to this day so he's done it he's made the best fried chicken the world has ever seen so he's like okay i would love that is it really that hard to reverse engineer food when you eat it like i don't know can't you like throw that shit on the lab and try to figure shit out i guess you can't get the perfect purpose on there but trial and error but i guess people are not gonna care about it that much and even if they do they'll probably get like lawsuit from chick-fil-a like this is exactly my recipe you can't reverse engineer that shit that type of way the only problem it's pretty greasy like it's it's really greasy it's too greasy to eat with your hands so he's like okay well i'm just gonna stick it inside of a hamburger bun with butter and two pickles and make it a sandwich and thus the chicken sandwich was born or at least that's what chick-fil-a says they say that they're the ones that invented the chicken sandwich and this was it so he's like you know what i'm done with this enormous menu selling all these different items i'm just gonna sell this chicken sandwich i'm gonna rename my restaurant from the dwarf house to chick-fil-a and this is all i'm gonna sell and the rest is history okay fast forward like 60 years guess what they're still doing today they are selling that exact chicken sandwich which leads me into the first principle of why they're so successful they follow the simple rule of if it's not broke don't fix it okay the chicken sandwich is perfect they are successful same way apple is successful invent an iphone equals success dollar signs four dollar signs not just one there you go Leave it alone, nobody touch it, just keep selling the exact same thing that got you here. I know that sounds simple and dumb, but most companies can't help but fuck this up. That is a Cheez-It inside. 16 times the size of a regular Cheez-It, I present to you the Cheez-It. Did he just go 16 times? Did he just in took out a Todd Howard shit there? 16 times the cheese, 16 times the detail. He's so true. I've seen that happening in like everywhere. There is no, even in WWE in many places. You can't have good shit going. People are like, yeah, but that's gonna get old. Let's let's do something else. Okay, you think that's gonna get old, or like you wanna fuck things up because you're like power hungry so much and you have the power to change it, so you're gonna. Some people are like that. I actually have power to change it, so I will to feel good about themselves when they get that powerful position. Something is working, right? Don't break it. What the fuck? That happens everywhere. There's not a place I can think of that, that, that doesn't do shit like that and try to improve it and ruin it in the end. And they have to like backtrack and go back to, oh, this is the original one. You like that, right? They actually advertise like that. This is the original one. You do remember you like this one? Crunch wrap. Okay, and I can give you a real life example why changing shit up and having promotional items all the time is a terrible idea. I used to eat Doritos all the time. Then one day Doritos came out with this new flavor called Buffalo Ranch Doritos Jacked and they were the best Doritos on the planet by like 10 miles. And I- Isn't that Doritos? Doritos? Well, why is it pronouncing like that? Is that how you pronounce it? probably ate a bag of them every day for several years straight. Then one day they just disappeared and they quit making them seemingly for no reason. I can only assume it's because it was driving down the sales of all the other flavors because they were the best Doritos ever. And now guess what? I just don't eat Doritos anymore because every time I eat a normal Dorito or a cool ranch Dorito or a sweet chili Dorito, I go, oh, 
It's like a shittier version of Doritos Jacked Buffalo Ranch, and I don't even like it anymore. Okay, because you gotta realize- Or maybe you are one of the few people who like that one, because taste buds are really specific, could be how your taste sensors develop. Uh, people have real- people like sour things a lot, some people like sweet things a lot, this is the reason. Like some of those, uh, you know, taste senses is stronger in you. In, in some other people, that's a different thing. That's why the taste differences are there. Something you could, you find repulsive. Somebody else really like that type of shit. So it could be one of those things because I highly doubt it's the reason like, oh, people are buying this so much that they are not buying other one. Because if that's the case, don't make the other one that much and buy this one more. You just care about profit. Why do you care? I think, you know, like they were probably not selling that that much and they're like, okay, I guess we can shut it off right away. I don't know. It could be. Because if that's the reason, like, oh, people are just buying this and not the other one, that's just stupid. But, you know, like, make this one more. Make this 90% of all your Doritos and, like, close the other one off. I don't know. I've seen that happening in real life, too. Like, I like Lassi, which is basically uh, sweetened curd with mango flavor and things like that. That's, like, a big thing here. And I drink that because, like, a lot of protein in that. And there was, a flip, there was a company here which is, like, insanely good. You will not find that kind of thing anywhere. And they were making a really awesome blueberry taste of it. They changed it a uh, certain way. Like, taste is a bit different now. There are little chunks in it that makes it really crispy and weird. I'm like, what the fuck? You just ruined the whole thing. It was so awesome. And I just stopped drinking that. Because I'm not going to put... If, if I'm drinking sugar, it better be best. Otherwise, I'm not touching that shit. People are creatures of habit. I would have habitually eaten a bag of Doritos Jacked every day till I died if they gave me the option to, but they took Doritos Jacked away. Then they essentially broke my habit for me and I just never went back to eating normal Doritos, okay? So it was a giant mistake to have the promotional item in the first place because if they didn't have that, I probably would have just kept eating normal Doritos for the rest of my life. But no, they fucked it up. <laughs> Which leads us right into our next principle, the KISS principle. Keep it simple, stupid. And this is really where Chick-fil-A excels. Okay, let me break this down for you. Here's their entire menu. They sell chicken sandwiches. That chicken can be fried or grilled and it can come with cheese or lettuce if you want. And then they also have chicken nuggets and chicken tenders. That's it. That's like the whole menu. And some of you are like, wow, that's not a lot of variety. I'd probably get bored if I went there a lot. First of all, unlikely it's the best chicken sandwich on the planet. Secondly, even if you did get to the point where you're like, you know what? I don't want a chicken sandwich. Cool. Then don't go to Chick-fil-A. Okay. If you don't need plumbing work done, don't call a plumber. But if you do need plumbing work done. I don't understand the McDonald's idea that everything has to be inside McDonald's. Ice creams, fucking smoothies, coffee, muffins. McDonald's french fries like all, all right I guess sure you could do that but I like this thing about Chick-fil-A yeah I understand capitalism done right now understand that element yeah this is better you don't want chicken sandwich don't go to Chick-fil-A what does that mean I'll get bored like how much varieties do you need if you want chicken sandwich and you say like there's not enough varieties here how much like I can only think of like two or three styles of burgers at best I've eaten my whole life I don't want to touch anything else like okay this is fine enough I'm not the kind of guy who just, I have to taste everything just to like figure shit out. I have common sense. I understand what I like and don't like. If some things, some ingredient doesn't feel appealing, I'm probably not going to touch that. Like how much variety do you want anyway? You call a plumber and if you want a chicken sandwich, you go to Chick-fil-A because it's the best chicken sandwich, okay? There's nobody on the planet that's like, man, I would really enjoy a chicken sandwich right now. And they pull up to an intersection and there's a McDonald's right next to a Chick-fil-A. Zero people on the planet are going to go to McDonald's for that chicken sandwich, okay? None. Nobody. Chick-fil-A has picked its arena of battle. And when it comes to chicken sandwiches, they are the undefeated heavyweight champion. Which honestly is exactly how you should tackle pretty much anything in life, okay? Pick the one thing that you want to excel at and just be the best in the world at it and you're going to make way more money than anybody else okay let me break this down for you every person that you've ever looked up to pretty much ever you've admired for the fact that they are the best in the world at something or they excel at one thing in particular okay michael jordan hasn't played basketball in decades but everybody on the planet knows who michael jordan is because that motherfucker was the best at playing basketball okay you've never had a role model in your entire life where you're like wow i just I really look up to this person because they're pretty mediocre at a bunch of random shit. Oh, mediocre. 
Okay, so picking the one thing that you want to be the best at and pursuing just that is a good strategy for pretty much anything. But when it comes to restaurants, it is uniquely awesome. And here's why. Picking one type of food to be the best in the world at makes the menu smaller. And making the menu smaller not only makes your employees better and the food better, it makes the customers better. Because the menu is small, customers are going to have less things to choose. They're also going to have less things to remember. So after you've been to a Chick-fil-A like twice, you know the entire menu. And even if it is your first time there, there's less things to choose. So you're going to pick one quickly and then you're going to move it along. That means the lines are moving faster. You don't have people standing there looking up at a menu with 10,000 different items drooling on themselves, desperately trying to figure out what they want. No, it's like Aldi. You have one option. Aldi. Pick it and move it along. Okay, so now not only are you getting a delicious chicken sandwich, you're getting it even faster, improving customer satisfaction. And there's still more to it because now on the other side of the cash register back in the kitchen, there's less items on the menu. That means that there's less variables and less variables almost always leads to less fuck ups. So not only are you getting a delicious chicken sandwich, you're getting it fast and you're getting it how you wanted it to be in the first place. Okay. Customer satisfaction is through the roof. Okay. And at this point, some of you think surely I'm exaggerating and having a smaller menu can't make the business that much better, but you're wrong. And we're going to go over McDonald's menu together and I will prove it to you. All right, McDonald's menu. Let's see what we got going on here. First off, we have the Big Mac and then we have the quarter pounder. First question right off the bat. Why do we have the same type of meat with different sizes of patties? Okay. Go with the smaller patties. And then if they want more meat, just give them more patties. Don't have different sizes for no reason. It's more variables and somebody's going to fuck it up eventually. Okay. Cause me, the fat guy on lunch break while I'm at work orders a double quarter pounder with cheese. And then they accidentally give me normal Big Mac size beef patties. I'm going to be sad. And then I have to get my burger remade. It slows down the whole world. Okay. Next order of business. Why do some buns have sesame seeds and some don't? Okay. Do I care about sesame seeds? No. Does any rational person care about sesame seeds on the bun unless they have an allergy? Absolutely not. But we all know that there's some Karen that's going to use that as an excuse to drive back back around and go through the drive through again, bitch out the employee for five minutes because she's trying to get a free meal over it. Okay. Now you've ruined the employee's day. You've slowed down the line and you have to make more burgers all because you can't decide whether or not you want sesame seeds on your buns. Okay. Just make a decision. Okay. Next question. What the fuck is the difference between a McDouble and a double cheeseburger? They look like the same exact thing. Oh, I see here. It's, it's one piece of cheese. That's the difference. You have a whole different sandwich with a different name over one piece of cheese. Okay. Just pick how you're making a double cheeseburger. Do you want it with one piece or two pieces of cheese. Don't have two different options because now I have to listen to the next 10,000 people ask, what's the difference between the McDouble and the double cheeseburger? One's cost seven cents more because it has an extra piece of cheese. Okay, that's dumb. Get rid of it. They're the same picture. All right, moving on. Chicken and fish, adding two more types of meat, which is more variable. So that's bad right off the bat. Secondly, the best sounding one is the bacon Cajun Ranch McCrispy. Now, unfortunately, it's a limited time only item and it's probably the best one because that sounds way better than a regular McCrispy, which means I'm never going to eat a regular McCrispy ever again because I'm always going to be thinking about the one that got away, the delicious bacon Cajun Ranch McCrispy, okay? Stop doing limited time and seasonal items. Every time I lose a limited time item, it's like getting dumped by a girlfriend, okay? Quit putting people through that. I yeah, I don't know about that one. Uh, strategically, that can make people run to it, right? And they cleverly do this. They create this limited time thing and maybe they'll change something, but they eventually will bring out the limited thing back and they will always have this limited option that they can really like those kind of like uh, people who love to eat McDonald's rush to the McDonald's if they were not gonna. Or maybe I'll eat McDonald's tomorrow. There's a limited time thing. That's a clever ploy, I think. I'm pretty sure McDonald's even got in trouble for shit like this. Like, okay, you're making easier for people to get fat type of way, but you can't really charge them for something like that. Either keep the item or don't keep the item. Okay, next order of business. Why are we adding a third additional bun? Okay, this one also has no sesame seeds. Just put the no sesame seed bun on this one. Or if this bun is better, just get rid of the shitty bun altogether. Okay, then we come to this philosophical conundrum. What is the difference between the McChicken and the McCrispy? Can somebody explain this to me? That's rhetorical. I'm fat. Of course I know the difference. Okay, this one right here is where they're trying to knock off Chick-fil-A. I know that because it looks like they're trying to knock off Chick-fil-A. And secondly, it comes in a foil bag just like Chick-fil-A. And this is their original Chick-fil-A sandwich, which is basically a frozen hockey puck that they call chicken that they popped in the microwave beforehand. Okay. If you're trying to rip off Chick-fil-A, just commit to it and get rid of this one altogether. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Then we have the chicken nuggets. Hey, stop it. Okay, so that's two. Now we've got 10 uh, for a total of 19 different items on their entree menu. Okay, now let's just go ahead and pop over to Chick-fil-A and look at a piece of art. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight items. That's it. Okay. Now I'm going to ding them here because that is a different bun clearly. However, I can see from here that that bun looks like it tastes like shit. So clearly it is a healthier oh, bun somehow. 
it's not a different bun but uh it's a uh, spice is the difference there right it's a spicy so clearly there's thrown a lot of spice shit there and this is just like grilled version so it's like a there will distinct different taste right so i guess i can see how it's different it's spicy so yeah we you know we have like a spicy in in mcdonald's here it's like spicy paneer whatever right basically the whole bun is made of paneer it's based on like you might like it or not but i i like it because first of all a lot of protein probably 30 grams of protein just there but yeah it tastes good if it's like made fried that way now that's going with the healthier cut of chicken so at least that makes sense okay okay moral of the story less items with less ingredients equals less fuck ups which makes everything move faster and this is where i really think they get capitalism right and that principle is slow is smooth and smooth is fast you see there's only 2900 chick-fil-a's and they're not in a hurry to put up a bunch more they would rather have one really good chick-fil-a as opposed to 10 pretty mediocre ones and that's why one chick-fil-a makes 12 times as much money as a mcdonald's and having this mentality yeah and capitalism done right as in like you you stay in your lane try to do your thing rather than trying to do everybody's job and remove competition right try to be monopoly as they're basically they're trying to sue apple for it you're basically monopoly you're creating this kind of ecosystem where people just go to apple store and no other store because if you want to have like earphones you must have an iphone right you have to have all these things together otherwise it won't work well if you want an apple watch you better have an iphone as well right same shit type of way like if you want to use airdrop you better have like you know like mac laptop or some shit so it's not like that. Oh, I do the chicken burger. I make the best of it. There you go. I'm not going to try to do everything. So it's, it's great that way. Reality allows them to focus on the original goal, which is just having good food. When you compare Chick-fil-A to McDonald's as far as opening up a new location goes, it's insane how different their mentalities are. Because McDonald's is meticulous, they go full psychological warfare mode on where they're going to put all of their locations. I I'm making these numbers up, but this is roughly what their process is. If you come to McDonald's with millions of dollars, say, hey, I want to open up a McDonald's. They're like, cool give us the general area, then they send people out to sit in potential locations and those people just sit there and count how many cars drive by. Click, 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 click. And McDonald's knows out of every hundred cars that drives by, three of them are gonna pull into McDonald's and they know that every single person that pulls into a McDonald's on average spends $12 or whatever. Before McDonald's even breaks ground on the new restaurant, they can predict within $10,000 how much money that location is gonna make that year. Chick-fil-A on the other hand doesn't give a shit. They're going full field of dreams approach. If I build it, they will come, okay? They can't. <laughs> Chick-fil-A is like, oh, we're making a restaurant there. Yeah, good, looks a cool location. I see some like sports field there, some schools, maybe some mall there. Maybe people will come here. Hey, it's gonna be fine, it's Chick-fil-A. People want to eat it. Well, McDonald's going full German OCD there, trying to calculate using AI algorithm to how, determine how people are going to think. What do you think that guy's hypothetical guy that's gonna enter there? Is he gonna order a burger or french fries? Let's see the data. Well, Chick-fil-A looks at them like, what is wrong with you? What the fuck is wrong with you? I tell you within $10,000 how much money you're gonna make in your first year, but guess what? They can tell you it's gonna be more than any fucking McDonald's around. And because they grow so slowly, they're not like a normal franchise where just some rich millionaire dude can come up and be like, hey, I wanna own a Chick-fil-A and never actually work there. No, Chick-fil-A owns every Chick-fil-A. They own all of it. They own the restaurant, the property it's built on, and all the equipment inside of it, okay? If you wanna run a Chick-fil-A, you become an operator, at which point you get 50% of the profits of that restaurant that you run, okay? They are extremely picky about who they let run chick-fil-a's you almost always have to work there for an extended period all of that mcdonald's doesn't work like that i thought mcdonald's like you get uh, uh you get the deal of that uh you make things basically in your your you have a half a profit mcdonald's a half profit no wait a minute mcdonald's work in a way that you just get the license to do mcdonald's otherwise you have to build everything you have to basically you, the guy who opens the mcdonald's have to have all the equipments and have to pay for it he owns everything but he owns McDonald's thing, so there's like a percentage thing there. But well, in Chick Chick Fil A, they own everything type of way. Is that it? That's kind of smart. Like there is no like struggle. So you're not gonna have that much range between different Chick Fil A's because I'll see range in like chain restaurant. Some areas restaurants are really good compared to the other ones. I can really f feel the difference. Like this is a real difference. And like whenever I go through that, you know, like food app, we have Zomato here, right? You have that, what is it, hub grub, whatever the fuck that is, right? I actually go through the location. Usually they just like give me the late, you know, closest location. Like there's a McDonald's here, eat it. No, I actually go through the location list because I know which one is better. It's visibly different. Like you can feel it. It's just different taste, look, how it's packaged. So I guess that's not going to be a factor with the Chick-fil-A, right? Because equipment is like all theirs, things are all theirs. Why would there be a difference that much?
period of time and worked your way up. These people end up making over a quarter million dollars a year and they have to have a very, very small investment. I think it's like $10,000 and it's not even technically an investment. It's more or less a security deposit because if this person goes to a different job or they retire, they actually get that money back assuming that the restaurant that they were running is in good condition when they leave. According to their website, like over 10,000 people every year apply to be an operator and run a Chick-fil-A and they pick like maybe a couple hundred. They have a less than 1% approval rate for people going through an extensive interview process that includes writing essays, background screenings, and everything else. Now, obviously there's pros and cons to this, just like everything else. One of the cons being while you are the operator, you're technically not the owner. So you kind of always have that dangling over your head. Like you're not actually the owner of the Chick-fil-A. You just run the place for somebody else. But at the same time, I think that it also incentivizes all the employees that work there because there is actually, I mean, you're just paying 10,000 as a deposit, which you get back. Like he said, like you're not owner anyway. So it's, it's, there's not really a con. If you want to own something, don't have Chick-fil-A. I don't know, do something else. Actually a clear path of like success. There's a real career there where you can actually work your way up the ranks and start making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year, potentially at a job that you started when you were 16 years old working in high school. Okay, like I think it does a lot to the morale and the overall culture of an entire company to actually have a visible ladder there that people at the bottom can climb up to the top. Because I mean, let's face it, a lot of these restaurants like, yeah, technically you could own a McDonald's, but also I think McDonald's charges 50 or $60,000 just as a franchise fee to open up the restaurant. Then you also have to pay for the restaurant. Basically you need like between two and $3 million to open up a McDonald's. So as a person working at the cash register, that dream of potentially owning one, I guess technically is possible, but also highly, highly unlikely. And the problem with- If you're working at McDonald's cash register or whatever, how the fuck are you gonna come up with two, three million? Maybe get a bank loan or something like have be really ambitious but at that point you like you can do basically anything you want that is instead of getting people that work their way up from doing dishes in the back all the way to running the store, you just get a bunch of multi-millionaire assholes that want to buy 50 McDonald's so that they can make even more money while also not working. Whereas Chick-fil-A, it's really hard to get a single Chick-fil-A. And then if you prove yourself and you're really, really good, sometimes they'll let you get a second or a third one. Less than 15% of all Chick-fil-A operators, which is their equivalent of like a franchise owner, actually run more than one Chick-fil-A and they're all highly successful. So at most, you're only allowed to run Chick-fil-A. While with other chain restaurants, you can just buy like 60 of them, make a bunch of money and never have to set foot in the place. And then your culture sucks. Nobody cares. It's just a giant money making machine to you. Whereas with Chick-fil-A strategy, even the people at the bottom of the totem pole can be like, oh shit, that's the guy running the show right now. He's here. He cares. He's helping me. He's been through what I've been through because he worked his way up. And I think that does a ton for the culture of a restaurant or any business really. And I think it's pretty obviously visible from the outside if you've ever been to a Chick-fil-A. I think it's the best service out of any fast food restaurant restaurant I've ever been to. People are usually happy and the statistics support that. They have half the turnover rate as a typical fast food restaurant and they pay a little bit more on average. In the same vein as slow is smooth and smooth is fast, this company also operates on little to no debt, okay? They're closed on Sundays, they donate to a lot of charity and they don't really like debt. Dave Ramsey is absolutely in love with this company. And what I mean by this is unlike other companies that go and get big loans to expand, they don't. They save up money and once they have enough money to open a new restaurant, they open the restaurant. And I think that this makes the entire work place environment better for absolutely everybody because now the dude at the very top, the upper management levels aren't freaking out about the bottom line. They don't have interest payments. They don't have payments they have to keep making all the time. It makes a low stress environment for them, which means they're not putting a bunch of stress and pressure on all the people below them. And that trickles all the way down throughout the entire company and just makes everything a hundred times better. So in conclusion, what do you like? Yeah, but I've seen things how it goes. Maybe the owner's son or something, maybe some ambitious guy will fuck it up one day. Why are you doing this? Capital, this is America. Where's the pressure? Where's the next bottom line? Where's the quarterly? Put 50 million Chick-fil-A's now. Sell them. Why, 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 why are you owning, owning everything? That's stupid. Give it to some millionaire. Like, we don't want that kind of a heat. Why are we owning all the stuff? Why, why is that Chick-fil-A that's like four states away from here and I'm owning that machine? Screw that. Give it to somebody else. Let's just worry about money. I'm sure that day is probably going to come. Chick-fil-A or not, you should absolutely pay attention to what they're doing because it is undeniable that they are an unstoppable force in the restaurant industry. They are the only restaurant to face nationwide boycotts multiple times in the past decade, and yet somehow they are still 12 times more profitable per restaurant than any of the other major restaurant chains. And they are somehow doing that with less menu items that have less variety between them while working less hours per day and working less days per week. And it all comes down to basic common sense principles, right? Pick the thing you want to be good at and just 
just be good at that. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Keep it simple, stupid. Don't overcomplicate it along the way. And slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Just don't be in a hurry. If you can apply those four things to literally any situation in life, you're more than likely going to be successful at it. Thank you for watching. The best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over the fatelectrician.com. Quack, bang, out. Yup, there you go. But I'm sure this just means like per item, raw profit, right? Because when it comes to corporation, you've seen certain things like, okay, these are the people, right? They're selling you for this. It feels cheap. How are they making money? There's like other things going in the background, like how Starbucks might as well be a bank for all that money. Uh, we just saw Fat Files video on that, right? So I'm sure like McDonald's and all those big chains with a lot of stores around the planet must be making a killing in like other elements. I don't know, probably advertisement, right? People can advertise on McDonald's as a shit because you have a lot of McDonald's all around the place type of way. I don't know, uh, some other way of making money, right? Because you have too many stores out there, too many things to uh, worry about. I don't know. They must have figured out some other way besides just selling food to make money, right? How certain big, big ass apps makes money on advertising and things. Much higher money than anything else type of way. Right? Because there's a lot of things like we think about like, okay, how are they actually making money? Like Costco thing, right? Like they're selling a raw thing, but they make money other way, right? And they make a lot of it. I don't know. It must be there. Like, but if that's not the case and Chick-fil-A actually outperforms that at that large scale, people at McDonald's and Subways and people like really need to think about like, should we follow the same uh, idea, doctrine, whatever of Chick-fil-A, because this is one thing I've noticed in America, people will basically cling on to things that work rather than be pedantic and like thick head about it. They will see like that's working better. Why are we not doing that type of way? So if that's the case, I'm pretty sure like people, other chains would basically try to do similar thing. Like let's try this strategy type of way. I don't know. All right. Well, if you like, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.